Hypokalemia is another life-threatening disorder that requires early detection and treatment to prevent cardiac arrest and death. Skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle tissues are sensitive to both high and low serum potassium levels. Therefore, the body systems affected are the same. Hypokalemia is defined as a serum potassium less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. A serum potassium of 2.5 milliequivalents per liter or less is life-threatening and requires emergent correction. The common causes of and risk factors for hypokalemia include loss of potassium from the GI tract due to vomiting, diarrhea, nasogastric suction, laxative abuse, tap water enemas, or ileostomy, inadequate intake of potassium due to potassium-restricted diets, malnutrition, anorexia nervosa, or potassium-free IV solutions, shifting of potassium from the extracellular space to the intracellular space due to the treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis with insulin administration or due to metabolic or respiratory alkalosis, excessive losses of potassium from the kidneys from potassium-wasting diuretics such as loop, thiazide, and osmotic diuretics, steroids, beta agonists, osmotic diuresis from diabetic ketoacidosis, or hyperaldosteronism as in Cushing syndrome. The signs and symptoms of hypokalemia are often difficult to distinguish from those of hyperkalemia. Serum potassium and ECG changes provide the best direction for treatment, but there are other signs as well. Gastrointestinal signs and symptoms include decreased muscle stimulation, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, constipation, abdominal distension, and paralytic ileus. Cardiovascular signs and symptoms include decreased contractility and increased cell excitability, cardiac arrhythmias, hypotension, and digitalis toxicity. ECG changes that indicate severe hypokalemia include broad, flattened T waves that sometimes become inverted, depressed ST segments, and prominent U waves. Renal signs and symptoms include impaired capability for renal concentration of urine, polyuria, nocturia, thirst, and decreased specific gravity. Neuromuscular signs and symptoms include decreased neuromuscular excitability, fatigue, muscle weakness, muscle cramps, especially with exercise, muscle tenderness, paresthesis, and diminished deep tendon reflexes. Mild hypokalemia with a slow onset might not induce notable symptoms affecting these body symptoms. As serum potassium continues to drop, however, the physical signs and symptoms will become more specific to hypokalemia. The serum potassium level along with the ECG provide the most information about the severity of this electrolyte imbalance. Management of hypokalemia is determined by the severity of the abnormality at the time of diagnosis. Mild hypokalemia can be treated with dietary and oral supplementation. Moderate to severe hypokalemia will require IV potassium, which must always be given cautiously. To manage hypokalemia, provide a diet rich in potassium including bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, raisins, and broccoli. Oral potassium causes GI upset, so give it with meals or extra fluids. Never give potassium IM or IV push. Dilute 20 to 40 milliequivalents of potassium in a liter of fluid and infuse it peripherally using a continuous infusion pump. Monitor closely for phlebitis and infiltration. If hypokalemia is severe, 10 to 20 milliequivalents may be given per hour if it's diluted appropriately. Typically, 10 to 40 milliequivalents are diluted in 50 to 100 milliliters of normal saline and administered over two to four hours. This admixture must be infusing via a central line with an IV infusion pump, and the client must be on a cardiac monitor. You can help prevent hypokalemia through identification of high-risk clients and early detection of signs and symptoms. What are some other strategies for prevention? Teach clients to eat a balanced diet and consume fluids regularly. Advise against unsupervised over-the-counter laxative use. Recommend that clients notify their primary care provider if nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea last longer than 24 hours. 
evaluate serum potassium levels frequently in high-risk clients. For hospitalized clients, monitor urine output, daily weight, and intake and output, and notify the provider of any variations from baseline. Monitor dietary intake of potassium. Observe the ECG for changes that indicate a falling potassium. Perform and document a thorough neuromuscular assessment so that you can spot changes in baseline assessment findings early. Hypokalemia is a life-threatening imbalance that can result in cardiac arrest and death if not recognized and treated early. Client safety depends on your comprehensive use of the nursing process, early detection, and intervention.